All right, what is going on guys? This is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. Man, it feels like it's been a while since we've gone and done this where I go and crawl and share with you guys. It's been a minute, but today we've got an awesome car lined up for you. This is my Axial Capra and it's sporting a couple of my own products. So one that you actually can and cannot see, it's given away by the uh, winch hook hanging out the nose here is I have a winch mount for Axial Capros and it fits the Reefs 99 Micro Servos. It also fits other Micro Servos, but Reefs is who I work with and I sell that as a kit with a mount and a winch. So if you guys are looking to get a winch in your Capra, it's solid aluminum, it mounts into the chassis, it makes it more rigid, and it's really strong. It'll pick the whole car up in the air, even with brass weights on the front axle. Be sure to check it out, westdesertwheeler.com. And if they're in stock, be sure to pick up a set of cut and shut tires from West Desert Wheeler as well. Now this car in particular is not like some ultimate crazy build. This one still got the Axial Capra transmission in it. It's got the Axial Capra dig in there as well. So we're gonna see if we can uh, make that work later on. But, I mean, it's got some brass portal covers. It's got a little bit of overdrive, nothing wild. I think like the 12% range. It does have a Hobbywing Axe uh, brushless system in there. Man, I always want to call those a Fusion now because I've got so many Fusions. But we're on an awesome trail today. It's one of my favorite spots to come out to in Sand Mountain. And the cap are making light work of this crack right here. And that is the reason it's one of my favorite trails is because there are a bunch of cracks where you have to stay balanced through tight technical turns. Uh, this one is chain reaction right now. We're going to go lead up into Master Link as we work our way down the trail. Now, one of the cool parts about Sand Hollow itself, uh, I'm going to use a big word for my own vocabulary here, is that Sand Hollow is dynamic. It changes a lot. So, you know, from run to run, different things will appear and happen, and the, sh the sand shifts around and can really make a big difference on the obstacles that you're out here crawling. For example, because I'm crawling on a real rock crawling trail here, this one has had some stacked rocks in it. So let's see if we can grab a dig right here, because... Uh, we're running out of real estate. We're gonna hang on that back tire. Maybe let's turn down and back up. Put a little too much pressure on the suspension and it's trying to flip us over. There we go, got the rears worked over. Just dog legging. That's what it's called when that rear axle goes up in the air like that. There we go, using some serious pressure to get that, get that suspension to do what we want. Now we're gonna drive straight into this wall and then try and bring it over. There we go. Sometimes it takes a bit of work to get that dig unit to disengage or engage when you want. Small reverse here and there to change the pressure on the drivetrain can really help you out. So another big issue I see a lot of people complain about is burning up those micro servos. If you get your endpoint set correctly, it can really last a long time. I've had them last months and uh, I, I run them pretty hard. So number one thing, get your dig unit, get the uh, endpoint set correctly. This is a tricky climb and I don't know if I'll get it today. I've only ever got this twice and I've tried a lot of times. So let's see what we can make happen. It's close. Really need some push off that right rear. And it's a delicate balance of dropping that front end down in the crack. Enough to get the sidewall bite, but not too much, otherwise it gets too sideways. And if it just kind of start going up the wall a little bit, rear is just loaded up with sand otherwise it would go that's the line see that front driver getting real light the reefs triple eight lots of torque direct power up to 4s i like the triple eight a lot it's a good strong servo i don't think i'm going to burn up my whole battery here guys but uh, that's the line unfortunately just that little bit of wet sand might be stopping us today Yep, kind of typical on this spot. You just gotta have perfect conditions 
and today is not perfect conditions. It's very close. There's just enough wet sand down on the bottom to stop us from making it. <clears throat> you know, that's why they call it a front burn. Sometimes you gotta get them front tires spinning to get it up and out of there. I'm gonna take the bypass of shame up and out, and we're heading to Master Link. You know, those cars are great, like, reminder to me why I really enjoy the Capra in the first place. I've got the Chupa Capra, which is on metal axles and crazy upgraded, and that's all great and fun. And there's a reason it got to that point, but this one's like a reset and just a lot closer to factory. I haven't changed the wheelbase. I put my cut and shuts on it with some squid inserts from SL3D. If you have my cut and shuts, be sure to check out SL3D. Neil over there, awesome dude, will help get you taken care of and makes tire inserts specific to my tires. They fit perfect and they perform awesome. I'm a big fan. And uh, it, that's after wheeling with them a lot. I'm a big fan of the performance of those. I don't just say that. And if I didn't think they performed good, I would not run them in my cars. And you can find them in more than half of my cars. And that's only because he doesn't make a perfect tire for a couple of my weird comp cars. But he makes a ton of options, even regular 475 size tires. Be sure to check out SL3D. Another small business like myself. You know, and it's important to help those guys out because those are the guys who are out there wheeling with you, man. When you're out there on the rocks, you bump into somebody. Those are the guys that are out there supporting everybody else. That's where the innovation comes from in the industry. And you got to help support the small guys, the little guys. It's very important. Here we go. And, you know, like our friends, Rock Pirates RC, family owned. I've uh, been working with those guys from the beginning. Very humble beginnings. And they're doing really well for themselves. They make great parts, all performance oriented for all kinds of things, and I'm a big fan. There's a reason I keep running their stuff, too. And it is good and hot out here, finally. Creeping up in the hundreds down here in southern Utah. It's early summer, so, you know, we're just getting warmed up. My body's just getting used to it. But we're now in Master Link Trail, officially in the canyon. And we're gonna see if we can try this little bonus climb in here. I don't think I've successfully gotten this. I don't know if I've had this good of conditions to try it. We're gonna see what this car wants right now. I'm trying to use that front front tire to help pressure the rear into the wall. And just those fine steering inputs to kind of make those rears do what we want. We really need that left rear on the wall. Need a little tighter pinch on those rear tires. car really wants to rotate to the passenger side. So this approach, maybe we'll climb that passenger a little more, try and help get our rear set up where we want to start. Although now my front is not balanced and we're digging ourselves a hole, so. Doesn't always work out exactly how you plan. You gotta try stuff though. Like I mentioned in the beginning, there's a reason I like this trail and it's because it's full of cracks. Here we are again, another nasty one. This one's denied me in the wet season before where uh, sand gets packed on your tires and it's just ugly. Now with the drag axle, you really gotta nail the line on this. So we're gonna see if I know what I'm doing today. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I do. There we go. Just when you think you've got it, it'll spit you right out. Let's get a reset on this. So my fear there was that my right rear would end up too high on the wall, but that wall washes out a good amount right under my front tire. So let's get our right rear good and planted on that right rear wall like that. Maybe we'll be able to bring it and pivot it. Oh, we lost our front this time. It's okay. A little easier to recover from that. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Need a little more front weight bias. 
And now our front tire is really scrubbing along the inside edge of that. Not quite what we wanted. And this is what I mean, you really got to nail the line. You got to really hit every tire exactly where it needs to go. So there we go. Right rear is planted, front left is a little light on that traction, running out of bite in the front left. I need to allow the tires to spin to let that back left come up. There it goes, there it goes. Let the car work, trust it. Don't go too far with the rear. And we are just gonna run the sidewall of that rear tire along that ledge. There it is, all right. Cool, I do know what I'm doing today. That feels good. So uh, the front burn for a win. All right, scrub them in a little extra. Ooh, we got it, I was surprised. All right, this is a fun little challenge here because the crack ends up like the exact width of the car. It is maybe just a few millimeters narrower than the car. So close that you can drop the front end if you do it wrong. And I believe I've only ever done this with a rear steer car. So already all crossed up, things are not going smoothly. You end up getting a lot of binding when you hit a line like that. So there we go. Car's up and balanced. See, our front tire's trying to fall in. For the most part though, we stayed pretty balanced. And then we gotta get up and over this rock. I actually broke this rock with my Chupa Capra when I brought it through here. Here we go, ended up dipped out on a portal. That's pretty rare. We made it through pretty clean. I'd give myself like six and a half, seven out of 10 on that one. Not perfect, but came out the other side. This wall has a bunch of lines in here. This crack's a little too steep. That one's a little too steep, just on that bottom left corner. We may be able to get it. It's kind of left us with these two lines that look obviously easy, but they're not. Uh, today, we might get the traction. It's pretty good conditions today. So we're gonna try the lower ledge. I think I've had success with that before. And if that doesn't work, we'll try the upper ledge. Let's see how this goes. And if it walks this, it's gonna be funny because normally I battle and battle on this rock wall. So if it does just easily cruise through this, looks like we're going to. Yep, drama free, no big deal. You know, just cruising up the wall. Okay, let's come back down and try another line in some good conditions because I rarely get those good conditions to try. My exit is to go right, right there, so. I mean, I almost wonder if just straight up the middle is gonna work. A little slick in the bottom. No, nope, not quite. So, that's all right. Let's get that front tire hooked in the little pinch point. Help get our traction there. And we do have a ledge there to hold us in the wall and not fall off. It's all right, we still got some room to work with. Nice, yeah, traction is amazing. I usually end up out here when it's cooler and usually wet. And this is a low point out here in the trail system. So usually if there's any amount of moisture out here, it's found in these canyons. So we're gonna try a little reverse entry here. <laughs> Getting lucky, but. Little front burn over. We need to find a place and excuse to use our winch, right? Let's try this upper ledge. I don't think I've ever actually done this. Nice, could be a cool little combo. Again, the winch mount. And I also sell a stainless steel bracket that bolts in behind the servo ears. And it has a bolt hole on it where you can do a suspension suck down winch. 
and that's included with just the bracket bear or with the winch as well. So all the winch mounts are sold with that suspension suck down bracket. Mine is stainless steel. You can see it right there on top of the triple eight possibly, but uh, yeah, I thought that was super important for a Capra winch. We do have those long shocks and without the D's company D's bands, speaking of small businesses, Dustin over there, big supporter of WDW, and uh, he's a great driver. I really like his products. Nice, our dig saved us there. It actually grabbed when I needed it to. All right, that was uh, probably the save of the day. A dig doesn't always work in those emergency situations. I guess we got lucky that time. But I use the D's bands to hold the nose down. If you don't have those and you have the winch mount, it comes with that bracket. And that's for using your winch as a suspension suck down winch. So be sure to utilize that if you got it. If you don't got it, go to westdesertwheeler.com. Get one for yourself. They bolt right into the stock capper cages. They're awesome and I have a few colors to choose from. Every time I've been in Masterlink, I've had to try this obstacle. And every time it's kicked my ass and it hasn't been possible. But I've been in a rear steer car every time. Maybe I've been messing it all up with rear steer and I just needed to drive a drag axle. Now our goal here, our goal here is to get past this crack and then up the ledge in front of us, up on the left side of the crack and then make it up the climb on that ledge. After that, I don't know what happens, but that's my goal for now. Because I haven't gotten that far. There's another impossible climb at the top, which I don't know if, if that will ever be possible, but it doesn't mean we can't try. Love watching the suspension on this car work. Using our dig unit, get that left front up on the wall before it's too late. Landed our front right on the ledge as well. Look at that Reef's Triple Eight. Car is completely bound and it never gave up. It didn't care that it was in a bind. It just kept turning. That's why I like Reef's. It's quiet, it's fast, it's strong, it's reliable. A lot of good things to like about Reef's. Oh, that was so close. It had the hook and it just unloaded on us. But we need to be articulated to let it hook like that. So I don't know if my suspension suck down bracket would have saved us because the car has to be flexed to get that. If it was pulled in all the way, it would just lift that front tire in the air. So with those D's bands, it allows full articulation, but also holds the nose down. Oh, come on car, we're so close. Yes, yes! I don't know if I've ever got that with the Chupa. Okay, I don't like where she's headed. Our dig is killing us. No! It will not grab four wheel drive until I put it in reverse. Damn you! After a good save earlier, and then it fails us when we need it most. We had it! So slippery in here, just a fine line of traction and slip. This is why I play on this one. This one's always fun. It's a good driver challenge. Rotate car, come on. Come on, what's that front right doing? I think the weeds are killing us. There it is again. 
Okay, we're gonna avoid that ledge on the front. Ooh, come on. Oh man, we're making progress now. Oh, don't let go. It is so slippery in here. <laughs> Officially the highest I've made it on this trail and it's with my drag axle winch capra. How hilarious is that? My chupa has never gotten me here. Maybe it's the forward weight bias, not having the rear steer set up. I don't know. What a freaking cool line. Okay. Oh yeah, capra width. Keeping those sidewalls right against the wall. I don't want to climb the wall, but I do want to hang on to it. This is where I would like to have some rear steer action. All right, let's 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 keep it rolling and see what happens. I'm a little afraid of that. Ah! Okay, let's, uh, let's use our winch to upright ourselves, right? Here we go, here's, here's the opportunity we've been looking for. Let's uh, find ourselves a little hook in here. I don't have a land anchor, I just have a little red hook. So we're just gonna, uh, you know, give it the old pinch and hold. So let's... There she goes. A little hard to film, drive, hold your winch line, keep it in shot. And then my controller's trying to run away in reverse. Well, all right, guys, we got ourselves upright on the impossible line. My Chupa doesn't have a winch. It couldn't have done that. But my WDW Capra winch does. What an awesome recovery with the old WDW micro winch mount. What happens now? Is there traction? Is there a line? Come on, come on. Drop the right side into the pocket. It gets light. I don't know if there's some kind of magic thing that will happen if we try and come up this side and transfer over. Besides just the suspension unloading. I mean, we can get damn close. Okay, I guess we'll just leave it there. And uh, we're gonna pull line again because, you know, we can. <laughs> so I gotta squat down, pinch the GoPro handle between the knees, use both my hands, one to drive, one to pull line. We gotta, so 
Sorry, sorry about that. Plenty of winch line as you can see. All right, we got our winch line hooked to a shoelace. That's how we do it in our comps at least. So here we go, we got our safety line. So I'll do it just a little more. Let's see if we can just hold the nose down through the crossover. And get it to transition. There it is. Now that passenger rear is really trapped and it's going to want to flip the car. So we still got a safety line on, but I gave us some slack. Let's see if the car will crawl this line in any way. And it fell down. Yeah, safety line for the win. Good fun times out here at the Capra. Breaking open impossible lines, kind of. I guess breaking open would be unassisted, right? And this certainly is assistance. And there she goes. Got the winch for the save yet again. We uprighted ourselves and made the impossible climb out the back, but we're ready to go hit the next obstacle. Not a natural formation. I mean, technically, it's not a solid natural formation, but a little bit of bouldering here, which can be tricky. And uh, what's kind of funny is like in the full size cars, I really like the Red Rock stuff. And uh, I feel probably overly confident driving across the different formations and whatnot when given the opportunity. But somewhere like Johnson Valley, where it's just boulders, like really intimidates me because like, Stuff just moves. Like, what do you do when you get diffed out? And, oh, you're going to get diffed out like 38 times in a row. Well, that went really well, didn't it? Wow, that uh, dug a hole a little quicker than I thought I was going to. So we're gonna try the opposite side. Yeah, I don't know if that's funny to some people that uh, the boulders are intimidating to me. Just because I feel a comfort in knowing that the obstacle is going to be mostly the same and not move underneath me while on the Red Rock stuff where I'm at. But I give a big, like, props to the guys who are masters of it, you know. They're really good at the Johnson Valley, King of Hammers area, or even just other trails similar to that. That's just the best example I can think of because it's not crazy far from me. So it's like, it's possible to go there if I really wanted, but it makes me nervous. We are on our rear axle hard, I'm trying to predict what all these little holes and different things are gonna try and pull the car in different directions. That's the trick trying to anticipate what the different forces are going to want to make the car do and how to stop them from happening or use them to your advantage. <laughs> Damn it. So one thing that's funny is on this trail, this little crossover and drop in to access this final crack here is one of the most technical lines on the whole trail. To where like, you gotta get this pinch just right, we're gonna use some dig to maneuver the rear through, and you gotta use your cage, cause you're driving a buggy. And you gotta get the angle just right. Nope, that wasn't it. I'm gonna get a rear over a little more and then stick it. Just getting around this rock is one of the toughest things on this trail. 
for the RCs. The big cars never even touch this stuff. They're balanced and way up above me. Oh, so close. Actually, we got that front left. Just starting to come up on top of that tire, on top of the rock. No, the suspension's torque twisting on us when we don't want it to. Ooh, we might be able to avoid the front burn. We're hard on the door panel, we're hard on the driver front sidewall. See, like, this is taking a bunch of attempts and tries. This is not one I typically one shot. And even, I actually crawled it off camera knowing it's a tricky one and then decided, you know what, I need to share this because it's a hard one. That right rear tries to throw the front off the wall every time. Okay, the right rear is on top where it needs to go. We're not going to let that front climb up on the rock yet. We got to get our car pivoted around first. There she goes. Now we're gonna put it in dig. Oh dear, gotta go back forward again. Okay, I need it to engage and dig. We're gonna try and back up this rock or drive it forward up this rock. Let's get a different angle. Maybe she's not quite far enough yet. Back into four wheel. That's where I want it. Okay, now we just gotta bind this car up right here. I'm gonna move it up a little higher. Come on, car. There it is. So now we got our front tire hooked up real good up top. It's all crossed up in the suspension. Now we grabbed four wheel, and now we've pressured the suspension so that that rear left is as light as possible. The car has a forward weight bias, so there should be almost no weight on that left rear, and it should be able to climb up that oververt face, and we're gonna go kind of straight with the fronts and pull the front of the car forward and down while that rear came up and over that overhang. So it's a really cool opportunity to kind of show you how changing the pressure on suspension while crawling by climbing different walls and twisting your car up can help you overcome obstacles. Here is one of my favorite spots on the mountain, the final crack for the RCs on Master Link. Jagged walls, they're pretty steep, so anytime you get steep, walls in a pinch makes it tricky to get just right but it is possible and then you know the different erosion on the walls makes it to where you really got to nail the line to get your tires placed in the right spot so the car doesn't end up slipping into the bottom trying to rotate that rear oh dear don't do that car There it goes. Now my rear axle is where it needs to be. Nope, slipped back in. Maybe this car is the wrong width today. Okay, this is how you overheat your electronics and make them not want to work anymore. I bet we just increased our ESC temp by a solid, you know, 15, 20 degrees warmer. 
Left rear, go up that ledge, damn you. Now the front wheel's getting wheel locked. Man, I've never struggled this hard in the beginning right here. And I know that I've driven a drag axle through this before. Ah, oh, it won't pressure where I want. Okay, let's drive it on this angle. Really trying to slip that front passenger through. Can't do that. Man, getting my ass kicked on this final crack, which is one of the reasons I like obstacles, man. When they can win, game on. All right, here we go. That's looking good. That's where I wanted it. I needed that left rear high to get up and over that crack so that I wasn't fighting it through the ledge at the end of that. So I'm actually gonna put it in front dig and drag the car a little bit. Sometimes that can help get those rears to slide and do different things and cracks rather than rotating and dropping further in. Look at that and all of a sudden my car's level. Now another really crazy part about Sand Hollow being dynamic and changing, going full circle, you know, a little callback action. Uh, this crack used to have a giant hole where these boulders are. Now I'm assuming some full size wheelers came through and ended up knocking some rocks down into the bottom. That will happen out here. But this thing had like a spiral water eroded pocket that goes down like five feet right here. And it was an impossible line with the cars. I would basically drive and it would just go down on the hole and that'd be the end of the line for me. But because these rocks fell in here, it's now back filled with sand and made an impossible line possible. But the craziest part is you don't even know that it's there anymore. Like it's completely hidden and it's just gone. So there's gotta be some other obstacles out here that I wheel frequently that, you know, maybe have some hidden terrain underneath. And in the future, with the right rainstorm or something, we might be able to find something that uh, I've never seen before. Getting our belly and, oh, it's so close. There it is, I'm a GoPro's about to die. Appreciate you guys watching. Hit all the affiliate links down below. Some of them are just businesses, small businesses. They're not all affiliates, so check them all out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for the support. If you guys are looking for a winch mount, go to westdesertwheeler.com. Cut and shuts available as well. Follow me on Instagram for the most up-to-date updates on inventory on the cut and shuts. That's typically where I post them. You guys are awesome. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the content. This is, uh, you know, this is why I do it. Really appreciate you guys. We'll see you in the next one. Keep the rubber side down. <laughs>